Here's your news for August 7, 2020. And your headlines for today include, Adam Cole vs. Pat McAfee is happening at NXT TakeOver 30, it's official. Marty Jannetty opens up about his confession in a new interview. Hugo Savinovich reveals that a current WWE wrestler was allegedly a hired murderer in his younger days. Sammy Guevara threw the wrong chair at Matt Hardy during AEW Dynamite gets major heat backstage. Identity of the members of the new Retribution faction revealed. Eric Bischoff's length of stay in AEW revealed. Former WWE superstar signs a contract with AEW. Why Roman Reigns was forced by WWE and more. We are kicking off today with news from NXT, as this week's show ended with a huge confrontation between Pat McAfee and Adam Cole, which looks to be the start of something bigger. This week's episode of The Gold Brand saw McAfee distract the Undisputed Era long enough to cost them their NXT Tag Team title match against Imperium, and following a post-match brawl between himself and Adam Cole, the former NFL punter leveled Cole with a kick to the head. Appearing on ESPN's Get Up, Triple H laid out the challenge to McAfee, saying that the commentator should face Adam Cole at NXT TakeOver 30 on August 22nd. The game even gave his prediction for the hypothetical match, saying he expects to see McAfee walking out with Cole's boot sticking out of his butt, and after more taunts by the Undisputed Era member on Twitter, McAfee accepted the challenge, and the match is now official. Cole's UE partner Kyle O'Reilly has said that the former NFL star doesn't belong within 50 feet of pro wrestling, and fans will get to see what McAfee is made of on August 22nd at NXT TakeOver 30. We've got an update regarding Marty Jannetty next as the former WWE superstar has revealed more about his recent apparent murder confession. Speaking in a shoot interview with Boston Wrestling MWF, Jannetty didn't try and backtrack on his claims, and instead gave more details saying that his alleged victim coaxed a 13-year-old Jannetty into his car by selling him marijuana. When the man grabbed the future rocker by the genitals before forcing him in an alley behind the bowling alley, Jannetty defended himself with a brick, but said he wasn't trying to kill the man, but just hurt him. He also spoke about disposing the body, saying, Can you imagine dragging him to the river and throwing him in, and then you hear this guy's missing? You know they do, and you know more than that. That f affected me bad, bro. I made my mind up that day, he didn't even do it in the dark. This incident supposedly happened in Columbus, Georgia in 1973, and with police now looking into the missing person cases from that time, hopefully we'll know what really happened, and updates will be provided when they become available. Over to NXT now and Karrion Cross has been doing some big things since joining the show, but now has faced a huge claim by former WWE commentator Hugo Savinovich. According to Savinovich, who worked with Cross together in AAA, the NXT superstar did jobs for the Mafia, and explained exactly what kind of jobs Cross allegedly did in a translated post from Facebook. He's an athlete that was once a hired murderer. I'm telling you, this is not a making this, making that, no, this is the real thing. Now he's so passionate about wrestling and he's so in love with his girlfriend Scarlett. I love my friend, he has a great friendship. This is a huge claim by Savinovich, and though the former WWE commentator didn't go into further details, he promised fans that he'll soon have an interview with Cross, which will explain things further. It's unclear just how much of this is true, as Savinovich has been very vocal as of late, recently critiquing WWE's deal with Saudi Arabia, but with this story not even being the first claim of a wrestler being a murderer this week, we'll keep viewers informed as we get updates. We are looking at AEW next as this week's show saw Sammy Guevara bust open Matt Hardy badly thanks to an incorrect chair shot. It now turns out that whilst the spot was planned, Guevara threw the wrong chair at the former WWE superstar. As Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Radio explained, Apparently there were two chairs out there. One of them was your traditional folding chair, and the idea was that Sammy would throw that and it would be like Sabu and Matt Hardy was supposed to be able to get his arms up. That was supposed to be a chair shot with no blood. Alvarez speculated that Guevara was too excited in the moment, and after being unable to find the right chair, just threw any chair he could find, which led to Hardy getting cut badly and requiring 13 stitches. It's also been reported that Guevara has received some major heat backstage over hurting Matt, and one person who is unsurprisingly annoyed is Rebby Hardy, who posted a video of herself taking out her husband's stitches and asked viewers what's wrong with the video. 
On Twitter, Tommy Dreamer commented on a tweet of Guevara's chair shot, saying that plastic chairs hurt a lot more than what some people might think. Though said he's not sure what would be worse for Guevara, as Rebby Hardy's wrath is pretty intense. Matt himself replied back with some colorful language, saying that he was going to destroy Guevara, then let his wife destroy the AEW star as well. This incident is the last thing anyone wanted to see, and given that Guevara only recently returned from suspension following his Sasha Banks comments, 2020 hasn't been a great year for the Spanish god. Back to WWE now and this week's Raw saw the debut of Retribution, a new stable which aims to bring chaos to the red brand. Right now, it's unclear who exactly makes up the members of Retribution, but according to Tom Colohue, who spoke on Dropkick Discussions, the group will reportedly comprise of various NXT call-ups. Tom revealed that names including Dominic Dijakovic, Chelsea Green, and Vanessa Bourne could possibly be a part of Retribution, as rumors persist that these three are all close to being called up. Time will tell which members of the gold brand are revealed as Retribution, but with this week's Raw already filmed, fans can expect more from the anarchistic group this coming Monday. One person who certainly isn't in Retribution is Eric Bischoff, as the former Raw general manager recently appeared on AEW Dynamite to moderate the debate between Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy. It was first reported by PW Insider that Bischoff's appearance was a one-off, and when Bill Pritchard of WrestleZone asked Eric about this, Bischoff confirmed the reports, describing his appearance as a cameo. Bischoff awarded the debate to the freshly squeezed one, and whilst there's no plans for Bischoff to be on AEW programming, we all know never to say never when it comes to the growing promotion. More AEW news now, and whilst Bischoff won't be appearing for the company again, at least not right now, one person fans can expect plenty more of is Vicky Guerrero. Speaking to Daily DDT this week, Guerrero confirmed that she has signed a contract with AEW, though didn't disclose any conditions from her deal, and said she had no hesitation to sign with the company. She added that after her departure from WWE in 2014, her focus wasn't to return to them, citing a difference of opinions, as well as things going on backstage. Vicky also said that if she wasn't with AEW, she doubts she'd be in any other company, as it's clear she's enjoying her time in Tony Khan's company. WWE haven't exactly been welcoming the former general manager back, as they blackballed her for having AEW stars on her show, even before she signed with the company. Now, fans can look forward to Guerrero managing Nyla Rose, and given that WWE didn't lock down the copyright for Excuse Me, many fans may need to bring earplugs the next time they're able to attend an AEW show. Back to WWE now, and we're looking ahead to tonight's edition of SmackDown, which has plenty packed on the road to SummerSlam. Following The Fiend's attack last week on Alexa Bliss, Bray Wyatt will be back in the Firefly Funhouse to address his alter ego's actions. WWE hyped up the segment on social media, saying, The Fiend Bray Wyatt re-emerged with a shocking attack on Alexa Bliss, as Universal Champion Braun Strowman remains missing. Wyatt had warned that the demonic creature was ready to be unleashed, and The Fiend set his sights on the helpless Bliss. Many people have speculated that Bliss has been included in the angle between Strowman and Wyatt because she is quite possibly the only person on WWE TV that the monster among men has cared for in the past, as seen in their time on the Mixed Match Challenge. The Fiend's attack also gives the Universal Champion a reason to go after Wyatt, and fans can expect to see the two face off for the gold at SummerSlam. Tonight's show will also see Matt Riddle face Sheamus, but with a King's Ransom on the original bro set by Baron Corbin, Sheamus may not be the only person Riddle has to fend off. Speaking of the King of the Ring, Corbin will be taking on Jeff Hardy on tonight's show, and with Sonya Deville being the guest on Miz TV, where she'll explain her attack on Mandy Rose last week, tonight's show will have plenty for fans to tune in for. And we're ending today with news from a SmackDown superstar fans haven't seen in quite some time, as Roman Reigns apparently pushed to work with some very interesting superstars before his hiatus. Whilst speaking to Fightful, FTR said that the big dog wanted to work with them in WWE, and he wasn't alone, as The Usos, Bray Wyatt, The New Day, and Shane McMahon all allegedly pitched ideas to work with the former Revival. Obviously, the pitched feud between the top guys and the big dog never worked out, and the duo added that once they saw the company had no real plans for FTRKO, a group that they credited Randy Orton as the reason it lasted as long as it did, 
that was the deciding factor for them to leave WWE. Now FTR are getting a much better focus in AEW, which includes a special episode next week dedicated to tag team wrestling. And with the team of Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler making big things happen in AEW, we wonder whether Vince McMahon regrets letting the talented former tag team champions go.